When we all start out on our musical journey from when we're a baby shaking the baby rattle to when we're teenagers picking up instruments or just developing a love and appreciation for music and becoming a fan, you kind of go one of three ways. You either become or stay with being a fan of music, you choose to do it as a career, or you choose to do it as a hobby. Everybody that I've ever met just loves music. I mean, we all have different tastes, but everybody loves music. There are people in the business that have been in the music business for a long time, some of them as touring artists and performing artists, that have never heard of a music supervisor. Today, we're gonna to go over what a music supervisor does exactly and talk about why there is that disconnect between the old music business and the new music business. You guys ready? Let's dive in. Welcome to the License Your Music podcast, where I'm here to give you all the tools you need to license your music to film, TV, ads, trailers, video games, and more so that you can earn passive income and obtain creative freedom. I'm your host, Jody Friedman. Thank you so much for stopping by today, whether you're listening on Apple or Spotify or tuning in with us here live on YouTube. We are so excited to have you and uh, appreciate you stopping by. Music supervisors. This is a term that is relatively new, relative to the duration and how long the music industry has been around since the 20s, 30s. Music supervisors really didn't come about till the 80s, maybe late 80s, 90s, um, and more in the 90s was it really uh, solidified as an actual uh, career path or a role. And then courses and projects on how to become a music supervisor and the Guild of Music Supervisors is only 11 years old. As of today, it was established in 2010. So it's all relatively new relative to the old industry. Today, I want to talk about exactly what a music supervisor does, because I've noticed there's a big disconnect, it seems, between a lot of the old music business, music industry folks who have been touring artists, performing artists, um, recording artists, and really haven't interfaced much, or if, if at all, with music licensing and music supervisors. So when they hear the term music supervisor, they think, "Who? What? what is a music supervisor? What the heck is that? So I'm here today to clear up some of that confusion and talk about what a music supervisor does. I'll start with just where I started as a um, a music supervisor before I really knew what it was, I was doing the process of syncing music to picture. When I was in high school, and even before that, when I was a kid, I used to love getting the video camera out and making silly movies, um, just goofing off like little, little kids do. So in those movies, sometimes we would put music to the film and you know, to make it funny, we do a lip sync of Weird Al Yankovic's Eat It or, you know, whatever it might be just to be silly and stupid and get a laugh. Uh, and then in high school, there was a high school news program where I went countryside high school called UPC TV. My buddies and I, the same friends who we used to make these videos uh, as kids with, we started a, uh, a group, I guess. It wasn't a company, but we called it uh, KFB and Company. And we started creating music videos to popular songs of the time, like BC Boys' Fight for Your Right, a Happy Together by the Turtles. And this, this was a local news program only broadcast at the school. There was no really internet like it is today. So we just did it. And, um, you know, we'd do a parody of those songs and film people in school doing silly things and then edit it in the edit bay and release it on the show's news program. And it became a, a regular thing or like a, I think it was a monthly thing that we did. And the school really looked forward to it because it, they were always pretty funny. So we got a big kick out of it. Uh, so even back then, this is when I was 15, 16, 17, I was uh, synchronizing music to picture without knowing that that was an actual career path. I had no idea that a music supervisor existed at that time and that that was a, a job or I would have I would have pursued it from the start. But um, that's part of what a music supervisor does because a music supervisor usually comes in in post-production on a film or a TV show or an ad or a trailer. They bring the music supervisor in to secure the rights for the music that's going to be used in that project. So while it has ties to the music business, 
uh, the record business, obviously a music supervisor needs to know record labels and know music publishers and know artists and have good relationships with all of these um, people within that industry. A, a big part of it, I'd say even more a part of it, is working in the film and content industry and having relationships with producers and showrunners and editors and creators that are creating content because they're the ones who hire music supervisors. We work in post-production for a production company. Music supervisors are not hired by the record label or a music publisher, They're, unless there's a soundtrack involved, that might be an exception. But most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, they're hired by a production company, whether they're producing for trailers or it's a marketing division producing for trailers and ads, or if it's a production company that's created a film, it's producing a film, and they get to the end of the project or they're at the beginning perhaps, and there's a script that we have to read through and, and do what's called a spotting session where we, we read through the script and we look for songs and sounds and perhaps areas where someone didn't think that there would be a song, like when a cell phone rings. You know, part of my job as a supervisor is to read that and say, oh, I wonder what kind of sound they're going to have there. Are they going to have a the generic ringtone sound or are they going to have an actual piece of music? Because that determines the cost of that spot. It also affects the creative. So it, part of the job as a supervisor when you're brought in early is to spot those things and point them out to creative to let them know that these are things to consider uh, when coming up with a budget for the project. There's a lot that goes into being a supervisor. I'll try to touch on as much of it as I can in this conversation by just sharing things with you and some experiences um, I've had from early on to today. So, uh, you know, I've been supervising for about 12 years now and it's 2021. And uh, it's been uh, really interesting and a lot of different types of projects and, uh, different nuances to each project, but generally there's one running theme in each project. And the running theme is securing the rights to the music. Whether that memorandum gets handed down from the director or the showrunner, hey, we want to go secure the rights to this. It usually starts with that. Uh, you know, we want this song in this scene. Can you go clear the rights? And we go get them a quote on how much it's going to cost. And if it's too high, which it might be, and we might even tell them up front, hey, it's probably going to be too high. And they might say, go get it anyway. And we go, go fetch. So we go get it. And we bring back to them and say, hey, it was too high. Let's replace it. And then they, it turns into a creative conversation of, well, what ideas do you have? And then it's my job as a supervisor to gather ideas to present to them as options for replacement options for that scene. Um, in other instances, you get it point blank. Like I said, you get the script from the get go and you're coming at it fresh and you can make creative suggestions, whether it's a TV show or a film uh, or a brand, you can make creative suggestions from the start. Also, if you're brought on early and uh, there's kind of a saying in the industry that music's always an afterthought and it's true. And that's why music tends to get the brunt of the worst budgets. Uh, that's why you'll find people coming to you saying, hey, we don't have much to spend. It's because after they spend all the money on the cast and the crew and the set and production, music is the last thing they think about. And usually they're in a crunch and they think, um, well, what do we have left in the budget? And they think they can use that to get the music they need. And when I say they, I mean producers. And usually those producers are mistaken and then find out very quickly that they need a music supervisor to help them secure the rights they need. And our job is, of course, to work within the budget parameters we're given, but it's also to maintain the value of the music for our rights holders, too. We do respect our rights holders. And when we reach out to somebody to clear music, uh, we try to give them a fair offer. And if the producers, at least for, for myself, if the producers are saying we want to give them this and I think it's too low, I will tell them that's that's way below market. That's never going to fly. So um, 
you know, I think that's really important. And there's some supers that probably work like that and others that don't. Um, I suppose early projects I took, I was more, yeah, whatever you need, whatever you need, whatever you need. But what happens when you do that is when you when you tell them it's going to cost less or you get it for less as a music supervisor, if they say, hey, we've got 10000 to spend and you go get it to them for 5000 what happens is the next time they want to license a song, they come to you and say, hey, we've got 5000 to spend. So now the budget's been cut in half because you set that precedence as a supervisor, bringing them something that you thought you were saving them money or do making a you know great deal for them. But really what happened is you, you pointed out to them, oh, I don't really need to budget 10,000 for this spot. I can budget 5,000. So the best thing to do is to budget properly based on the market conditions and what you've been licensing lately as a supervisor. And for those who you know are just getting into being a supervisor, you'll have to ask around and find out what those uh, price points should be. But I, I digress. So a music supervisor is brought in on post-production, which is an exciting time to come in. Everything's moving really fast and you've got to secure rights quickly and make magic happen, which is always fun. I like making magic happen. It makes my clients happy and uh, the licensors are always happy too. So it's a really fun, fun process. Uh, sometimes the music supervisor is brought into the post-production house in, in non-COVID era. I'm recording this and, uh, you know, posting it on YouTube during COVID. But before COVID, uh, for instance, I was working on Ingress the Animation, which was a, an animation project for Netflix. And there were, I want to say, 11 episodes, maybe 12. And there were 24 minutes each. The project was originally produced in Japan by uh, Fuji TV. And, um, well, it was produced by Niantic in conjunction with uh, Fuji TV and Bang Zoom. And what happened was they brought in a, a whole creative musical team to revamp the soundtrack. And that consisted of myself, the composer Jacob Yaffe, a brilliant composer. Post-production supervisor was Rye Wardwell. And Lisa Fowl was the sound designer. And Eric Klein was the post-production house um, executive. So they brought us in on the project together. And I'd worked with Lisa before on uh, previous films that I work on, like uh, Don't Fade Away and Camp Hell. And there's someone inside your house. Uh, no, sorry. Um, now there's someone inside your house. Um, something's wrong in Kansas. These were old films that I worked on many years ago with Lisa. So she brought me in on this project and I met these other crew members and we had a great time, but it was challenging because we had to convince um, the, the team in Tokyo about the new sound that we were applying to. And we really, what we were doing was making it more Hollywood sounding. They had their Japanese soundtrack and we made it more Hollywood to make it more um, dramatic. And it worked really well. We had some really nice uh, songs in it, uh, Plants and Animals song, which I really enjoyed. And um, gosh, we, we licensed a lot of really fun songs in that project, but it's on Netflix. It's called Ingress the Animation. It's based on a popular augmented reality game that you can uh, get on your iPhone and it has like a cult, a cult following. The people who play Ingress love Ingress, kind of like Pokemon. Um, but anyway, I won't go too deep into that. Uh, so Ingress, that project uh, was a lot of fun because I got to go to the post-production facility, which is always a blast. And I bring my laptop and I sit in the back of the room and I audition tracks real time for the producers there on the spot. So I'll be pulling tracks throughout the day when we need some music and then we'll play them up against picture on the big screen with the big speakers. It's like a miniature theater in those, in those facilities. So it's a really nice, nice time and it's a, a good way to audition music and see if it works or not. Of course, I'm listening on my headphones usually on my laptop and then I play it for them and try to gauge what's working for them and what doesn't. I can usually get it within the first one or two rounds. Sometimes sometimes I have to go three rounds to get them creative submissions and to get them to come around towards my creative or to lean into what they want creatively. That's part of it too. You have to know your audience and determine if this person you're working with, whether it's the producer or the director, are they the one who's really driving the creative boat? And are they willing to work with you and collaborate with you on your creative ideas? Sometimes they're not. Sometimes the directors are set in what they want and that's it. And your job is to get them the rights to what they want 
and that's fine. That's a job, you know, but uh, every job is different. So that's kind of what I, what I mean by that. Another instance is when you, I'm working with a brand, it's a bit differently because with a brand that doesn't have a sound, we have to dial that sound in from scratch. So we look at the, the company and their, their various divisions and determine what their look is and what their demographic is and who you know who their their audience is and try to come up with a sound from scratch that fits that brand and try my my thing is trying not to mimic other brands we want to make it unique to this brand so sure you know every brand might want to be as popular as big as app as apple or uh, as Nike, but you don't want to do exactly what they've done because what they did and have done that works really well is be different. So you want to be different. And I encourage that in every project I work on, I try to make different musical choices. um, So I'm not just, you know, following the leader. I like to uh, set new trends. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind for any aspiring music supervisors out there is to be bold, take chances with your music. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But when it does and it's really bold, it's a really sweet spot to land. And uh, it's kind of what uh, what I love about it. It's the same as what I love about being a songwriter is as a songwriter, you get to create music and see people's emotional reaction to that. And that's that's what I love is creating some sort of a reaction, whether it's humor or sadness or happiness um, or anger, whatever it is, music can create such uh, universal emotions. It's like the language of the gods. I, I flip and love it. But um, so with music supervision, it's kind of like being a songwriter, but you're, you're writing, your pen is the, the screen. So you get to create an influence with other people's music, which is even, I think, cooler <laughs> than getting to just write my own songs. I get to work with other people's songs and find what works about their things and, and bring it to the world and make it, you know, affect people and see what works and what doesn't and also help artists along the way with getting placements. So I'm kind of digressing a little bit, but hopefully this is some insight into what a music supervisor does and, you know, a reason why you want to know these people is it's um, music supervisors are the modern day A&R. You know, it used to be the A&R at the record label when that's all there was, was getting a record contract and touring. You wanted the A&R to hear you at a live show and sign you. Nowadays, you still can do that, but uh, you know you want music supervisors to hear your product, your music, to hear your music. I refer to it as product probably too much, um, but it, it's your music. You want them to hear your music and to, it's not signing you, but to license it for a project, to put it in a project that can catapult your career. So music supervisors, can break artists' careers, literally, by putting them in the right project and can, you know, take you from zero or 100 fans to 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 and growing. And then that can ultimately lead, lead to a record contract if that's what you want or a publishing contract if that's what you want because licenses can build up that perpetual royalty stream and publishers look at that when they come in to look at you and you want to be a staff songwriter, they're going to see what what do you have coming in on your royalties that we can bank on if we give you an advance, if we buy into that and we buy in as your co-publisher or your publisher, what's the income stream look like five years from now, six years from now, 10 years from now for us to do that? So there's all sorts of reasons to um, get involved with music licensing. Hopefully this gives you some sort of insight into what a music supervisor does. Uh, I probably definitely did not cover it all. I mean, it's, it's really everything that pertains to the music. And that could be, it could also include if there's a live shoot and there's a, a scene where there's a song and dance on set, it is the, the music supervisor's job to coordinate all the players and to work with the unions and make sure that all of that, all those pieces fall into place on the day of recording and that all the documents are secured, all the contracts are, are, are secured, um, any insurance that's needed is, is, is purchased by the production company. The music supervisor is, to, is meant to supervise anything related to music and sound. 
So there's all sorts of angles that, that a music supervisor is supposed to cover, and that's just one of them. If there's a, a musical, a, a show, a film that is a musical like Glee or uh, The Prom on Netflix, a music supervisor is responsible for setting up those pre-record sessions where you take the cast into the studio and you record in the studio and you make sure that when you record that, that they're, that's going to sync up on the day of the shoot. You make sure that the continuity is in place, meaning that there's no issues with their lip sync being off and, and uh, you're watching them while they're singing it to make sure they got it right because you are in charge of the music. You're supervising all the music elements. So a project like that um, is extremely involved for a music supervisor in addition to securing all those rights for the source music and all of that. You have to do all of this other thing, this other stuff that comes with being a music supervisor for productions, for film, TV, ads, trailers, video games. I've never music supervised a video game, but it's similar from what I understand. You're just, there's a lot of, actually a lot of, there's a lot of different nuances in video games because you've got, imagine a game like Super Mario Brothers, which I know is super old, but you had, it's kind of like choose your own adventure with the music. If a composer creates a piece of music that goes to this point, well, here's what happens if you die. Here's what the music does then. And here's what the music does if you survive. And here's what the music does if you get an extra point. And, you know, there's all these different nuances to the music with video games that a supervisor has to think about as well as licensing popular music like uh, FIFA for, for um, you know, PlayStation and Xbox. And they use a ton of popular artists in those games as well. So, and also securing the composers. If, if a composer is not already on a project, it's the music supervisor's job to bring a composer in. So the music supervisor is there in a supportive role to the producers of the film or the TV show or the ad or the trailer or the video game or whatever it might be to supervise that process for them. So having a, an understanding of music is super important. Having relationships in the record business, in the publishing business, is incredibly important and having relationships in the entertainment business in the film business in hollywood is incredibly important important as well thanks so much for tuning in i'm jody friedman and this is license your music and if you're listening on apple or spotify to our license your music podcast please leave us a review that really helps us out a ton and if you're watching on youtube thanks so much for stopping by subscribe below uh, share this video with your friends and family. Follow us at License Your Music. And if you're looking to get heard by music supervisors and you want to get into music licensing, come on by the website and grab our free guide to learn how to do that. And we have a masterclass that right now is open. It may or may not be when you're listening to this, but there is a wait list. So come by, check that out. Uh, when we launch, there's always some sort of bonus offers that come during that time. So there's advantages to waiting for that launch week. Uh, we, we try to help as much as we can with getting your music license and showing you how to get your music license. It's something I've been doing for a long time and I'm lucky to be in a position to help you do the same. So thanks so much for listening. Stay cool. Peace.